God's house. Yeah, amen. And it's a blessing to have the God of the house. Yeah, amen. I'd love to say it's good to see visitors in the house, but to my knowledge, we don't have any. It's just family here. here. Looking forward to the day. I appreciate Sunday school. God bless. Appreciate the song service. God ministering to our soul. I'm looking forward to the day. Pray much for Preacher Golden. God willing to get to that point. Preacher Golden will be helping us today. Through God's Word. Uh, I want to give you this uh, before we go further. Uh, not afraid to be carried. Mark uh, chapter 2, I believe it is. There's a man sick of the bed of palsy, and this just echoes in my soul sitting there this morning. Mark sick of the bed of palsy. Um, four men would come by and carry him. Would go to the house of God and church house is cram packed tear the shingles off the roof and lower him down. Uh, I want to let you know, uh, I believe every person has a little bit of pride in them. You may not agree with that, but I, I do. I believe that. And we, we enjoy the abilities that we have, and some of the most heartbreaking times in our lives is when we don't have those abilities. Would you agree with that? Yeah. And we read in James chapter 4, verse 10, humble yourself in the sight of the Lord. He'll lift you up. Right. There's times that we want to walk with God. There's times we want to run with God. There's times we want to be God's number one. But we shouldn't be afraid to be carried. Amen. There's times that we want to be the one that's praying for people. We want to be the one that's somebody's prayer where we, we are heir and her that are Underneath God's people and just we're, we're the soldier. But don't be afraid to be carried by the prayers of people that love you. Yeah. Well, the book of Matthew, I believe it is, and, and you know this story. Uh, Peter uh, is there with the disciples in the ship and the storm comes. And your KJV would say that the winds and the storms beat vividly uh, against the ship. And, and some would say that the storms, or I'm sorry, that the Savior brought the disciples to the storm. I'd like to let you know your storms bring you to the Savior. Amen. It was perfect condition for God Almighty. You look at what's going on in your life, and it, not, it might not be the best of conditions for your okay, and it might not be the best conditions that you would like to go through in life, Life never is that way, to be honest. But it is the perfect weather in your life for God Almighty. And we think of being carried. I want somebody that's going to carry me to handle me with care. I have, uh, I have told faith, and I mean this in a ha-ha. I have told faith when I die, if I am 300 or over, had me creeping. <laughs> but I don't want to put somebody through that. <laughs> then again, find people that don't like me very much and make my fall <laughs> But if you and I were honest, our storms don't really handle us that well with care. Is that right? Right. Moses has put in. Uh, this is just me helping you before we before we go further. Moses is in a basket. And that basket is not prepared to handle the care. That basket is prepared to get him from point A to point B. God's grace is not so much worried with getting you to heaven without scars and without wounds and without battles and without tears. God's grace is prepared to get us from here to there. Amen. And you'd better believe it will. He will. I encourage you, you take a look at the storms in your life, you take a look at the trials going on in your life, I'd love to let you know they're carrying you. Thank you, Faith. Boy, I love you so much. Why, the only reason I married you, nobody else say amen. Boy, Faith there. Your sickness is carrying you, your storms, your financial difficulties, your tragedies, your mournings, M-O-U-R-N-I-N-G-S, your mournings are carrying you. But I got bad news for all your storms, all your problems, all your sickness, all your difficulties. I'll let you know where they're carrying you to. They're 
there and he's straight with Jesus Christ. And then when he gets there, he's going to ask you to walk on. Uh, what a blessing. Hey, I can remember the McCain's. Now, I won't get far into this. This is truth, though. I can remember the first song the McCain's sung because of the shout-out. Some of y'all remember this, too. They sung a local uh, a local concert. You don't know what they sung? They shouted her down, too. And, and, and this is before contemporary, before all the stuff we have now. Hey, McCain, you grab that mic. Under his feet. When the storms are over your head, they're under his feet. And man, those folks just swallow her down. We ought to be encouraged that what we go through is ushering us into the presence of God. We'll pray at the close of service now. Looking forward to the day. Thank you for letting me give you my, my little spiel that God put on my soul. I'm looking forward to the day. God's been good to you. You know that? Yeah, through it all, God's been good to you. Anybody this morning, you've got a song on your heart, you've got a testimony? If nobody else has anything, no, no. Yes, sir. I'd just like to thank God for all his blessings. Yeah. You know, it's hard to see your wife struggle with something. But I knew God was right there with her. So all I had to do was pray. That's all I did. Yeah, dude. Say, God, you know what to do more than I do. Yeah. No. No. He brought us through this. I'd love to be back in church with her. It was hard seeing her out, but I knew she needed time to heal. Sure.
Anybody need to brag on the Lord? You want to?
yourself. I'm going to ask you to stand and we're in it. Uh, chapter 16, the book of Mark, if you want to read along. We'll start with the first verse. I really am only preaching two words, but I want to read a few verses of context. And we'll get there. And I'll try my best to explain why I, where I got this. Mark chapter 16. In verse 1, we're going to read down through 7. And when the Sabbath was passed, Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James, went on and brought sweet spices, that they might come and anoint him. And very early in the morning, on the first day of the week, they came into the sepulchre at the rising of the sun. And they said among themselves, Who shall roll away, roll us away the stone from the door of the sepulchre? And when they looked, they saw that the stone was rolled away. For it was very great. And entering into the sepulchre, they saw a young man sitting on the right side, clothed in long, a long white garment. And they were frightened. And he said unto them, Be not frightened. Ye see Jesus of Nazareth, which was crucified. He is risen. He is not here. Yeah. Behold the place where they laid him. But go your way and tell his disciples and Peter that he goeth before you into Galilee. And there ye shall see him as he said unto you. That's the reading. Amen. Now I want to read one more verse one more time. And you may have heard this preach. I'm not real sure. Uh, but it stuck out to me like a sore thumb. And, and, and here we are. So I'm going to read it one more time. Verse number 7. But go your way. Tell his disciples. Now let's take a long pause. Let's smile. Let's look at the angel and say, And Peter. Yeah. Make sure that you tell Peter, Cody. Yeah. When you go, don't make sure that he's not left out. That's good. It's like as in heaven. All in heaven saw Peter fall when he denied Christ. But instead of stumbling on him, he says, Go. We hide under hats because we can't really just 
and reality just disappeared. But we can't let the whole world know that we're in a place we shouldn't be, or that we're struggling, or that we're hurt, or that we're not saved by the grace of God, or that we've got a turmoil in our homes, or, or stuff with tragedy in our family. But heaven forbid we let somebody know that. And so here we find a habit, pick it up and put it on and go to work. That's a work habit. Yeah. Maybe we go and then we socialize with our friends. Oh, there's our personality habit. Let's hide under that one. We hide under hats. I read the context because I wanted you to realize where Peter was at. But also why he was hiding. And also why God made it so important to put it in his word to tell the disciples, have his angel tell the disciples to go or to go tell the disciples and Peter. We wear many hats. But I read that and, and, and it's like you just stop. Smile. <laughs> and Peter. Yeah. He's not left out. And that is what an awesome, awesome thing. Here, here Peter, he's, he's considering looking at himself like a coward. Like a traitor. Like he's good for nothing. Like Jesus is dead and all hope is gone. Yeah. But Peter, yeah. don't forget to tell Peter. Amen. I've gone too far. The world's too ugly. I've done too much. I, I hate too much. I have no love in my heart. Woo! I'm struggling. I'm dead. And Hillary. Yeah. Amen.
you're, when you're really living on fire for Christ, that you shove it down everybody's throat and make everybody hate them. Well, like you're one of them church goers or annoying, you just always nag and get saved, get saved. You, you, I, I know that sounds silly, but to a lost and dying world, that's what they see. Sure. Why? Because Christians in that state are hiding under a hat. Amen. Other than Jesus. I'll go as far as to say that there's preachers that hide under the preacher hat. Deacons that hide under the deacon hat. There's moms, there's dads, aunts and uncles, they hide under their mama hat, their daddy hat. Be careful. Just be careful. Now, what you say? is here. And not just what they see because it's important for us. We need to wear Jesus' hat. You want to know a little funny? Matt and what? Went over there yesterday and shoot him. And this whole, I, I didn't really know where to go with this. And I thought, you know, I don't know how to open this up. Why do I bring this up? And I know it really doesn't matter. I don't have to have like a, here. God's got it. I, 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 I really have been fine. So look, we pulled up the driveway, and Matt likes this old brim. I have a Tilly's hat. So we have a kind of Tilly's hat. So I love, I love Tilly's hat. And I got thinking about hats. I was like, man, there's some hats I can't, I can't stand. I bought it because I thought they were like, I liked it. But they don't fit well, or they don't look well, or somebody has said something negative about my hat. So I just sit it up on the shelf and I look at it. And I wear something. I thought about that this morning and woke up and said, How many hats do I wear in life? And where do those hats get me? In life. If I slowly wear my daddy hat, I could be bad in the future. If I slowly wear a boss hat at work, that's bad. If I solely wear a friendship hat, I'm not saying these things are bad to have. I'm saying if you hide under them, that's bad. Yes, sir. Because if I'm always a friend that I ride along, I'm riding the coattails. If I'm always a dad, I'm looking out for what I think is best for my kids and not what God thinks best is for our family. If I'm always wearing my work hat, it's I'm looking out for what my crew does. Not what we all should do. Amen. We hide behind many cats. Peter was hiding. But, but catch this. He was, he was in shame of what he did. You don't even have to shake your head or raise your hand. But you have ever been shameful of something you've said or done? Yes, sir. You know how hard it is to go to that person or maybe the situation and try to try to mend that? It's hard. And I'm not saying that you have to. I'm saying that God can. Amen. If we don't hide under a hat. If we do, we're in a shameful situation where we feel remorse. Convicted, and we're trying to figure out how to handle it, and we just decide what you, you know what, I'm just going to put a, but I, I, I'll forget about a hat on. You walk around just acting like it never happened. Does that really help your situation? <coughs> the answer is no. I feel like I've worn my Jesus hat a lot. 
I mean, there's times I turned it sideways and looked it backwards, and, you know. But it's been on there. Yeah. How good is that? Groove. Scott, you put an old Velcro hat on, it's not the same as nice. It may look just as cool, but it's it. You're miserable. See where I'm going with this? Yes, sir. The hats that we wear in life can make you feel good, can temporarily bring pleasure, can temporarily bring peace of mind, but they cannot bring the peace of God. Amen. They cannot bring the peace that passes all understanding. You will eventually come. It will get uncomfortable. It will, will wear out. It will get the old, ugly, nasty, white salt stain. You'll have to throw it away. So why hide from it? We all do. It's okay to admit that. We think of ourselves as when we fail or when we mess up. Okay, we just admitted a few minutes ago I'm just going to say probably all of us have. Okay? When we think of ourselves as, as failures or that hope is gone and, and we hide. And I know we're competitive here because I want you to catch this. But we often hide. Sure. Because it's easier to hide, it's easier to run, it's easier to forget. But sometimes it is to forget. Amen. But rather than picking up somebody else's hat, or go somewhere and be someone you're not, be you. Amen. Be you. You need to be. When it comes to forgiving, if, if, if it's that hard to forgive somebody or something, Forgive you. So you guys can be alright. If, if you and him are alright, that forgiveness comes a whole lot easier. Amen. To the others. Amen. That, that truth is, you, you've heard this before, and, and, I, and I say this all the time. I'd rather, I'd rather work or be with somebody or be friends with somebody. Larry. The old man would go anywhere, do anything. He's just Larry. He's the same Larry. Out there as he is in the front pew. Larry, that's a compliment, bud. I'll give you crap later next time, but it's a compliment. <laughs> because Larry's Larry. Now imagine if you just, you live Christ-like and you just, you, 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 you threw away some of them hats that you wear a lot of, them hats you hide under. And you just, were you. Who you, who God has wanted you to be. You slip, you fall, you have failures, yes. But the angels themselves, God himself, he says, and enter your name. And he helps you. Now what if you're that person walking through life? What do you think people see? They see genuine. They see honesty. True. They say, they see real. Because I've heard this and I've said this a lot. Well, I'll give you a couple examples. I don't really like so-and-so and I won't leave the name God. I said this. I don't really like so-and-so, but you know what? You know what you got. You know what you're getting into. If you want to go that route, go ahead. But at least, at least you know Be the person that nobody looks at and says, eh, I know they say they're a Christian. I know they say they love Jesus. Yeah. But eh, I don't know if that's always the case. But what's your question? Don't be that person. I asked, have you ever prayed and felt that warm sensation? 
I love it. I love it. This, the spirit is, is kind of, just kind of sweeps, sweeps over me. Most of the time, the tears are falling. You didn't even see it coming. Don't you love that feeling? If you don't, I, I make you pray about getting saved by the grace of God because you should have at least felt that one.
I'd encourage you, if there's anybody in the house this morning, you'd like God to help you, the mom, you'd like God to help you, the dad, you'd like God to help you, the minister, the preacher's wife, the deacon's wife, you'd like God to help the person that wears the hat. Why don't you come see him? You hear, you a young, you a teenager, you a kid? Man, I, this whole message, all I could do was think about teenagers and young people. Trying to put on so many hats just to fit in. And man, by the time you're like 18, 19 years old, after putting on all those hats, you don't even know who you are. When you can literally just be satisfied with the person God made you. If that person under the hat needs help today, this message was just for you. All of you folks that's got everything together, sitting in the shade, drinking pink lemonade. This was not for you. You came the wrong day. But for all of us that don't have it together, this was for you. Welcome to Sunday morning, Peter. Let's stand. Let's sing. God bless you.
sweetness of the Spirit of God today. I'm not going to refer to the Spirit of God as it. It's Him. Amen. We ain't, we ain't messing around with no hocus pocus. It's the presence of God. Thank God you're here today. I've enjoyed getting to be in meeting with you. Ain't you enjoyed getting to be in meeting with House God? I know people that their whole family has forsaken them, but they can come into this place and feel like family. That is the family of God. It is. Uh, we've got answered prayers here today. Miss Naomi, so, so good to see you. Amen. Ain't that Cody Lawrence stood here at 10.07 this morning, Dakota, and he said, pray for my grandma. And then right there she is. Missed it, should shout it. Amen. Yeah. I just, I thank God. We've got prayers answered in the house. So glad you're here. Uh, Miss Nancy and Fort Lynn here, that we've been praying for them this week. Uh, they've been traveling. It's going to be a blessing uh, for Mr. Jesse. Mr. Jesse's home going. Uh, please pray for Jesse's family, his kids. Please pray much for them. Uh, it's needful. Very, very needful. Pray much still. Uh, for Mr. Carroll, for the Wayland siblings, the whole family. Uh, thank you to the church for all the help. Uh, had a very, very grace filled home going. Uh, the other day for Ms. Joyce, appreciate it so, so much. Uh, please continue to pray for them. Uh, pray for Pastor Bob. It's needful. It's needful. Pray for him. Say this in way of announcements, don't forget. Uh, Thursday, November the 10th, God willing, we'll be going into Thanksgiving meetings here at the church. Chase, what's the difference Thanksgiving meetings and revivals? Uh, God will focus us in on His awesomeness and how awesome we've been blessed. Amen. If you save it up and shout, it'd be a good time to let her out. It just would. And, uh, God's never fed He He blessed last year so wonderfully. And I'm looking forward to getting it. You pray for the men of God, pray for the singers, they're coming in. Um, also, uh, in way of announcements, the last Sunday night, I need to ask the church a favor, uh, not a favor, I need your help. You can call this a deacon's meeting, you can call it a board meeting, and you can call it a church meeting. So I'm getting ready to run it by everybody. Uh, the last Sunday uh, of November, that morning, uh, the Johnson family will be here with us to sing. Uh, folks that we love dear. Chase, I don't know who the Johnsons are. You're getting ready to. Um, three years ago, three years ago, two weeks ago, um, I was in revival here. Uh, Y'all didn't think much know who I was. Look at how far we've <laughs> uh, Sorry, not sorry. Um, three years ago, um, Casey Johnson, we asked prayer for her. Uh, her mom was shot and killed by her stepdad. And we sought the Lord for her. We, it wasn't long after that. Casey stepped out committed suicide. And we have, we have, you may not have remembered them, but we bore them up in prayer many different times. And uh, God will, they're going to come here and sing for us on that morning. I'm looking forward to you seeing the people you've been praying for. Yeah. I'm looking forward to it. Um, Sunday 13th. Thank you because I completely left that out. Um, Thanksgiving meetings, p.m. services start at 7. Sunday morning will start at 11 o'clock. We'll make sure you got that etched in stone. By the time we get there, uh, we'll chase what happens if we show up at 10 o'clock on Sunday morning for Sunday school. Well, you showed up early. <laughs> Just hang around a while. It'll be fine. Um, Forgive me. If y'all disagree with this, it's fine. It really is. God's been dealing with my soul some things. I know we've been going through the book of uh, or through Philippians 3.10 for weeks now. Uh, I want to spend a few weeks. Um, God's dealt with my soul and his burden all day yesterday. Um, we're going to finish, God willing, I feel strange, so just look over for a minute. We're going to finish Philemon 25 Thursday night. Unless God does something different, we'll finish it Thursday night. There is a bonus part. You bring your Bibles the next few weeks. There's a bonus part of the book of Philemon. I'm sure you preachers probably already ahead of me. Of who wrote the book of Philemon? And I want to spend some time there for the next few weeks. If God will deal, I believe He will. I want to share my burden. Is that all right with you? It's about a 
saying that you, uh, we'll chase your forecast and what you preach. If God does something different, we're fine with that. I am. But I want to share my burden with you. That last Sunday night of the month, uh, Chase, we don't have Sunday nights. Well, the agreement was if it was a special occasion or a special meeting. Yeah. That was the agreement. <laughs> that last Sunday night, would it be all right, and you'll get a better glimpse of it in the next few weeks, could we come in that Sunday night and have an appreciation service? Chase, you know, I don't know if I can make it. It's one Sunday night out of the year. I guarantee you can make it. Um, what's it look like? You can call it testimony service, whatever you like to call it. But we are so used to coming in, singer sing, preacher preaches, two or three people may brag on the Lord. You know, here's the truth. Onesimus will know just how much love Apostle Paul poured into that letter. And, and this is getting into it because Onesimus is the one that wrote it. Paul couldn't see very well and he had Onesimus write that letter. There are people in this house they know you love them but how many of us can admit there's times love needs to be a little bit embarrassing? Well, Chase, I don't want to call out my loved ones in the middle of church and tell them how much I love them. They need that. Is there anybody here who can hear me? We come in that last Sunday night. You be ready. I'm not going to wear my preacher hat. I'm going to wear my husband hat. I'm going to wear my grateful hat. You be ready. That last Sunday night, we'll come in. If it's all right with you, I can, I can take a vote. We can come in at 5 o'clock. Um, Chase, how long is it going to be? Hey, you get done bragging on your blessings, we'll, we'll go to the house. <laughs> and, and if nobody brags on their blessings, guess what? We'll start that night. We'll start Bless God and Revival. <laughs> <laughs> well, wow. Lord's mercy. How can we worship if we ain't thankful for our blessings? It'd be all right to come in that last Sunday night for appreciation testimony service. Can you raise your hand? God bless you. Amen. We'll look forward to it. Um, please continue to pray for Miss Liz. There's so many to be in prayer for. Um, anything else? I'm missing or overlooking. Yes. Pray for Miss Karen. Karen has an appointment tomorrow. Please pray. Please do. Anything else on your soul? Pray tomorrow. Glad you're here today. Yeah, they will be Lord mercy, all the rain is here today. Couldn't just shout. Amen. Glad you're here. I'm enjoying seeing more of you. So just going to be dead. Amen. Glad to say, you say, man. Amen. Amen. Let's stand together if you would. We'll get ready to pray again. We're going to dismiss the prayer. We've got much to pray about, much to pray for. But before we do so, you need to know something. You ready? Can God? God. Amen. Oh, we'll try it again. One of these days, we're going to get to where we're not so Baptist about it. Right? Yeah. Yeah. I like that church. They're so loud. Man. The preacher says, can God? They all just yell. God can. I like it. Amen. Well, sometimes your doubts need to get hushed. That's it. Can God? God can. the Lord. Amen. Appreciate you being here today. Brother Randy Lester, would you dismiss this prayer? Yeah, Thank you for the work Thank you.